Hello and welcome to another episode of Who Dares Rolls TV. I am your host Mike B and um, we're going to do some new stuff and things and stuff that's happening in the next in this coming week or what's happened in uh, in board game world. F list. Okay. Um, so, uh, top off the gate, let's go for a bit of Gloomhaven. You know, can't be a bit of Gloomhaven. So, um, aside from everyone waiting patiently for news of the Gloomhaven 2, the bigger box, um, there was an announcement from Isaac Childress at the Shucks convention, which is Shut Up and Sit Down's convention, wherever that took place. I think it was Canada. Um, he was on a panel with Matt uh, for Matt, and they were discussing numerous Gloomhaven things, but one of the things that popped up um, during that was that there is a new Gloomhaven game coming out. It is Gloomhaven Untitled. Um, it's obviously looking for uh, a title, or maybe it will be Gloomhaven Untitled. Um, but yes, what this is, is a standalone separate box of Gloomhaven kind of compacted down. So it would looking like a, a $40, sort of £40 value box, which essentially is entry level for the for people who are off put by the ginormous huge Gloomhaven box. Um, so it will cut down the components, no legacy elements, four main characters you'll be playing, and a smaller sort of campaign. The idea is anyone as I say is put off by the idea of a year-long campaign of Gloomhaven or however long it's going to take can kind of dip their toe into the Gloomhaven world with this box. I'm presuming mechanically it's all going to work and I believe the characters can be used in the main campaign if you want to, however it's not like the legacy stuff. Who knows? Anyways, interesting to a certain extent. Um, you know, if you've not yet got the Gloomhaven bug, then it might be a way into the door. I mean, we played Gloomhaven, uh, just to be clear and concise on this. Uh, we played that for about a year or so of Gloomhaven and really enjoyed Gloomhaven. It just it did what it has always said it would do. Um, it was a really cracking, big, dungeony, crawly sort of... Uh, uh, legacy gamey thing in uh, yeah it was madness anyway so yeah it's very cool um it, i can totally see where some groups will be put off because it's a huge commitment to play it and financially um but yeah gloomhaven giant small gloomhaven baby gloomhaven who knows gloomhaven light um but that's coming out um i don't think there's a release date of that yet but that is on the way i'm presuming that's probably going to be next year sometime um but yes you know, if it gets more people into playing Gloom Gloomhaven. I've said Gloomhaven a lot during this segment. Just one more time for the cheapest, it's Gloomhaven. Um, so yes, there's that. So that's, that's happened and all that. So what else is going on? Kickstarter. There's a few things going on on Kickstarter that might pique your interest. Um, Senate Magazine has just launched. So this is from Dan Jolin, who was a, a features editor at Empire. Um, James Harper, I think he's done some Times and Guardian sort of board sheety type interest. Um, so this is essentially a broadsheet version of a, of a board game magazine. They're going to focus more on the artistry of designing and the artistry, artistry of, of board games and kind of a bit of a glossy sort of posh sort of uh, coffee table sort of issue thing. Um, this is issue one there. They're kickstarting at the moment. Um, potential for more of them. Um, there's definitely a room in the market for... There's not much printed material for board games at the moment. We've got Tabletop Gaming Magazine, which is more of a kind of general all-purpose thing. Um... This is going to be, as I say, I think it's going to take the hobby from a more artistic level, something a bit more highbrow. Daren't, we won't say the word hipster. We're not going to use that here. Um, but yes, this is kind of, for those who are not quite in the know yet, something a bit, bit you can put on your coffee table having a look at me. I have said it magazine. But yeah, we'll see. Um, it's an interesting idea, interesting concept. It's it's quite a low entry point of um, to be able to back it. I think it's about seven pounds. Um, so it's not massive mega bucks. And again, maybe something interesting. Whether print can keep up with everything else. I mean, we've got video, we've got people texting and, and, and writing text, even not texting. <laughs> um, but yes, there's a massive amount of, of content creators out there at the moment. There's huge. When I started back in the good old days, there was only a few of us. But then there's loads of them. Um, so whether a published print thing can keep up or compete with that, who knows? That's for, uh, we'll see. So we'll see if it's fun. It's, it's started today. It's funding. It's looking for about 11,000, I think it is. Um, so got a bit of a crawl to go to reach that funding level. But it's different. Um, it might be of interest to you. So there's that. Um, another thing we launched um, just the last couple of days was Subterra 2, um, which 
allegedly winging to me is going to be a preview copy of that um the subterra was one come from itb games uh, a couple of years ago um and essentially was descent the movie not the ball game descent the cavers in the cave system being attacked by monsters really good movie if you've not seen it go and watch descent uh, but essentially it was it was kind of like the ball game equivalent of that a co-op game um of you trying to get out to laying trying to escape a um a cavern system um and not get eaten alive it was quite a cool little concept um really good art and design on the idea uh, it had some issues with the kickstarter i know there was a lot of bad feeling at one point over it because of some of the components and some other bits and pieces but actually the game itself is a solid little game and itb have done all they can to kind of fix any bad feeling out there and and, and done pretty transparent in the situation and, and being good to people so aside from that sub terror 2 um it essentially takes what Subterra was, which was this dark, claustrophobic sort of horror game. Um, and they seem to be Indiana jonesing it up, where this one is actually sees you into a cave system, actually into a live volcano, I think it is. You're essentially running through there, trying to get some keys to unlock, uh, to get to the gem. There's traps, there's all sorts of stuff, there's lava. Um, and what a cool mechanism in this, a cool sort of tweak on this one, is that once you've actually grabbed the jewels then you're trying to get out again as the mountains erupting so the things filling up the lava sounds kind of cool looks kind of cool um really dead i want sub was doing i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> uh, sorry yeah really dig what um digged we dig it um really really dug what um sub was doing it was really it was a fun innovative little game um and uh, yes and and it may well be featuring on our forthcoming halloween games list uh, but yeah subterra 2 is essentially indiana jones cross with subterra you're in a mountain volcano escaping lava traps uh, all sorts of funny games um that's out now kickstarter's out now there is obviously options if you've not got the original subterra to back that some of the expansions there is expansions aimed at for this as well one of them is a competitive one sounds interesting um but worth a look if you're that way interested um at some point down the line we will be doing a preview of said game which would be cool what have we played this week um so we played a few things um jaws finally got jaws to the table uh really good fun um, <laughs> um I, I, as i said before in last week's thing of this I, I was a big jaws fan uh it didn't disappoint it was really good fun it's just a really good fun game it's not too deep um you know component quality is a bit shaky the cards are quite thin and and all that but aside from all that it's a 20 dollar game um so it, it really does a really good job it's two act structure i'll go into a view of it at some point but if anyone is a jaws fan or looking for just something really light and easy to get to the table it's about an hour's worth of play a push really easy enough to teach uh, and just fun a fun game which resulted in us finally beating the shark to death with a baseball bat um uh, which is just random at the best of times but yeah jaws really good wasn't disappointed in any way by that one cracking game um uh, really really good entry level cheapest chips game uh, comes recommended from us um what else did we play i'm really snotty um tapestry so um i had an aborted game of this the other week um which i won't go into at this point in time but yes required required ambulances and stuff during a game it's very heavy we play we play really hard and tough on our games but so we had a, a second go at tapestry i mean my first opinions on tapestry were it it really interested me i i liked what it was doing uh for, again with any stone game it was a tad overproduced um but yeah so a second game of it a different race i played um i scored okay i think i managed to get somewhere up there in the rankings of nearly second place on it uh, it was interesting again i really i'm quite digging on this one um last week i was left really like astounded by it and almost to the point of like actually thinking it's probably going to buy a list second play of it has left me still intrigued by it i'm still interested by it i've called on potentially if i would own it now if i'm honest but i want to get a few more plays in of it just to see how different these different techs are the different races um but yes it's got a lot of flack it's very marmite tapestry uh, but at the moment i'm definitely still resting on the side of i am i'm enjoying it 
I like what it's doing, want to play some more of it, but um, again, more tapestry, was, was good fun. Um, something else we played was Dice Hospital, uh, which is one that's passed me by up to now from Alley Cat Games. Uh, and again, really enjoyed that one. Um, it, I, it was from designer uh, Mike Nudd, who did Waggle Dance, which is a really cool little dice placement game with bees. Um, this one's a hospital. Um, essentially, the idea is that the dice represent your patients. Um, a number one dice is very poorly, um, and a number six dice is, is quite well um, and you've got this influx of these dice these patients coming into your hospital um, and you're obviously trying to through manipulation of the dice to make them well so they leave and you score points for doing that um, you can buy uh, more bits of your hospital you can bolt on um, there's more specialists you can add allow to manip manipulate the dice um, it, it's relatively straightforward it's quite an easy game um, and we enjoyed it as such it was an easy easy game however th th there was a point where you suddenly found your head hurting <laughs> in, a, in a nice feel but yeah really uh, really enjoyed it uh, really cool little game uh, i would definitely recommend that one as uh, one i played i would like to play again quite enjoyed it like a bit of Mike Nudd, um, like about dice. Dice is always good, um, but yeah, really good. Dice Hospital um, from Alley Cat Games. Uh, we'll do a review down the road on it, but yeah, really enjoyed that one. It was good fun. God Almighty, it's not in my nose. Uh, so that was the stuff we played that jumps out at me. Obviously, we've got some reviews coming. We've just put out a review of the Dawn Gardens um, from City of Games. Really cool little tile placing game. Thinking of games, what made your head hurt? My God, that made my head hurt. It's a good game, but oh, um, there's that. We've got a Super Gnomes review forthcoming. We're doing that very soon. That'll be out. Um, Charlie has just put out um, his uh, The Goose of Grilna Grove, which if you've been caught up in the the hype train around the untitled goose game then uh charlie has you covered for your rpg requirements of your tabletop requirements is the the goose of good again which is essentially untitled goose game the rpg uh, where it sees you as a bunch of villagers basically bullshitting about a, a goose that's really messing up your day what a dick a goose dick shenanigans um so that's quite cool um well it's not we've been very active on anything else i've been receiving some twitter photos from um cheapy one of our regular fans of various animals um never region so if you want to follow my twitter feed you'll be able to see all sorts of things who knew an ocelot was hung like that um and that's it really i'm just trying to see cast my eye around we have got um we still got to do a review of the uh the game damnation game yes that's coming um obviously we're going to be doing a halloween list of games that you should be playing in this winching season and um some other reviews and stuff is forthcoming that kind of wraps us up for this enthralling episode of who does Wells tv um until next time we will be uh, back next time <laughs>